As we've journeyed together through Lent, we've been looking at different practices we find in Jesus' life and aiming to bring those into our own lives with small daily practices so that our lives look more and more like the example of Jesus. And we've been basing that in the Gospel of Luke this week in our final week. As we approach Easter, we're looking at Jesus' practice of perseverance, specifically as we find him in the Garden of Gethsemane before he's arrested and then crucified. The idea of people in the Bible having to persevere is certainly not new here. I mean, take your pick. Noah, who um, perseveres against ridicule and mocking until he's on the ark with only his family and some animals, a whole other type of perseverance. Or Joseph, who although maybe brought on some of his own struggles against his brothers earlier in his life, certainly had to persevere in prison for years, wrongly accused of misconduct. And yet after all of that, he himself says that God was working out his purposes in all of that. Or literally any of the prophets or the judges in the Old Testament or jumping into the New Testament, it almost seems like a marker of the early church to persevere in the face of trials and suffering. And that's also the example we see here in Jesus. Luke 22, starting at verse 39, says this. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. And then we get one of Jesus' most famous prayers, not my will, but yours. And picking up in verse 45, when he, Jesus, rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. If we go back to verse 39, we read Jesus went out as usual. This week's practice of perseverance is a little different to the others we've looked at because it's not one we really opt into. It's one that finds us, I guess. And yet there's a regularity in Jesus' prayer life and spending time with God that fuels him through this. And the repeated phrase that Jesus warns the disciples with is pray so you won't fall into temptation. And so the other thing, the other thing that we can pick out in this one of Jesus' biggest examples of persevering in the Father's will is him encouraging the disciples to pray against temptation. He almost sets these up as opposites, perseverance and temptation. And so we need to know what we're persevering in and we need to know what we might be tempted by. Let's start with temptation. Temptation against what then? Temptation against uh, believing that God isn't in control or capable or to try to take things into our own hands. We know that most of the disciples fled when Jesus was arrested and Peter denied knowing him three times. And so the temptation is to incorrectly view or define God by our experience of difficult circumstances and rather hold on to the truths we know about God outside of those situations. We're persevering in plans and will of God our Father, creator of the universe. Romans 5 verse 3 says this, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so Jesus is the ultimate example of one who knows what it is to suffer and yet persevere in the Father's purposes, praying, not my will, but yours be done. 